Okay, recording has now started. Okay. And we're going to trust the process. And uh, it's nice to have you back here again, Dr. Dan. Um, I would like to have you give your thoughts about the trance addresses channel through Wayne Sturgeon, but also if you could give some background information about yourself and your how you how Awaspi came into your life and your general thoughts about it, I guess. So start anywhere well, you'd like to start. Do you do you want me to start like at the beginning and go through the whole thing? Well, in, in a short summary, perhaps, if you can, uh, whatever you think would be of interest. We started talking, why don't we start at the, you went to La Crucius with, uh, right. And we met Wayne and I would say that Wayne and I kind of hit it off right away. Right. Wayne was just for the record. Rain, Wayne was a very common man. He uh, uh, he was a fork truck uh, mechanic, or as they call him, truck lift mechanic, and uh, so he was uneducated. Right. By that, I mean, he didn't go to college. He, he finished out of high school. Sure. He was not an educated person uh, intellectually. And uh, he had well, several rough spots in his life. He had a real serious bout with alcoholism. He was, he was Native American? Does that sound right? No, he was part. He was 25% oh. Mohawk. Okay. I'm I'm twelve point five percent Pawnee. <laughs> you know, he was because he was in Canada. Mohawk mostly up in Canada. I see. See, so uh, he felt like that's where some of his uh, psychic ability came from, because the Indians are supposed to be more uh, spiritual and more open to these things. Right. And so he had started years ago doing trance sessions with yeah. a good friend. And yeah. but they were talking about more so about uh, flying saucers and things like that. Right. And not not spiritual matters. I'm kind of showing a picture now of Wayne in a trance on my screen now. Can you see it? Uh, no. You see me. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Uh, let's see. That's real uh, important. Let me talk a little bit about trances. Yeah, please do. For anyone that might listen to this, there are several different kinds of psychics. Let's say psychics, and because people have an understanding about that. But actually, psychics are the lowest on the rung, the lowest rung on the ladder. Uh, oh, 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 go ahead. What ladders yeah. are we talking about? Psychics are deal with the uh, spirits that are still up earthbound. Mm -hmm. And so then you go up and then you have auto writing, uh, which Wayne did also. And auto writing is probably the best way to get information because the when there's a trance session, uh, the spiritual being has to use Wayne's mind and they have to go, they are limited by Wayne's vocabulary. Right. They, so when he would do uh, auto writing, then all they had to do was use his brain like a typewriter and they were able to type so they, they were able to give uh, a lot more detailed information. And so then you have uh, uh, clairvoyance and clairaudience and, okay, I lost you there, but we'll- Oh, you lost me. Can yeah. you see? No, I got you down here, but I've lost me. Oh, but you can see Wayne and me. No, I can only see you, I can't see Wayne. Oh. 
Am I a small picture? <laughs> yeah, I got your small picture. Okay. Uh, there we go. Yeah. Uh, so let, this is this actually is a really important point. Right. Uh, uh, now, for Wayne to go into a trance, it took sometimes several minutes for him to actually enter into a trance. Right. Uh, maybe as long as 10, 15 minutes. Uh, and he would kind of hold his breath and like he was getting this uh, asphyxiated. So then he would fall into the trance and his uh, speaking would be perfectly okay. I now, see. there are mediums, but they're not trance mediums. And the uh, mediums don't go through any of this. Uh, and they, they're just, they just don't have the same ability that a trance medium does. A, a medium is influenced too much by earthbound spirits. I see. I've met some, I've met some people like that, such as Bell Sundgren, who would, yeah. who would be able to channel what they were hearing, but there was sometimes interference and she got more than one voice is, uh, talking to her at the same time sometimes right now with a trance medium some other characteristics are that the spiritual beings uh, use his body and brain and he's he is totally unaware of what's going on mm. a medium on the other hand is aware of what they're saying and when it's over with they will have remembered it for right. wayne could never remember anything he he got while in the trance. He would always come out of the trance and saying, what happened? What happened? What did you find out? Right. See? So, uh, so anyway, those are some different characteristics between uh, mediums and trance mediums. Thank you. And, uh, and then we have, we have the clairvoyance and they can see the spiritual world, but they can't speak to it. That's an and interesting distinction. Thank you. So, yeah. So the only uh, thing that they can do is tell you what they saw, but there's no information given. Right. Um, I had uh, in Bell Sundgren's uh, prayer meditation group that I used to belong to in the 80s, uh, Doris Welch was a member like that. She could see things and uh, Bell Sundgren could hear them. So they worked together with their uh, uh, psychic abilities. One could see, one could hear. Right. Now, in this picture you have of Wayne here, there is an interesting point there. Okay. Uh, if you'll notice, he's very bright. And what happened is the sunlight was coming in and shining right on him. I see. And it was that time of day. It wasn't a, a, any kind of a spiritual light. It was just the sunlight was shining on him. And I thought that was going to destroy the trance, but it didn't affect trance at all. He just kept right on going. I'm glad to hear that. Um, is this the original uh, first trance that you ever had with him? We had, when we went to Wayne's, we had three. I thought there was four, but uh, there were three. And uh, so in the, in the first session, an important point, uh, it was January the 26th in 2000. And they told us that it was a date of fair importance. What was that date? What was January? What? January? January 26, January 26th, year 2000. 2000. Did they explain why? Yes, because we were marking the, the beginning of the change for the OASPI people mm -hmm. and the new, the new uh, so-called religion was going to come about. 
new religion? Well, that's the only way they could put it at the time. Uh, they aren't as, as concerned about the correctness of some th of a transmission as they are mm -hmm. the concept. I see. They want to get the concept through. And if they have to refer to people as angels to do that, they will. But the people that are angels are not angels. They're just people. Uh, yeah, oh, we, we, I raise people, however. I see. We, we put a lot of significance on categories, but it's not really how reality works. Right. Yeah, there, there is. Uh, are you able to see me? Uh, not, I'm, I'm, uh, let, just a second. Let me go back to. Uh, let me go back to you. And OK, no, not yet, but keep going. What what is it you wanted me to see? I'm sorry I'm so new at this and. Right, that's OK. I'm, I'm new at it, too. Uh, OK, maybe maybe I can see you soon, I think, I hope. Oh, uh, are you still there, Dr. Dan? Yes, yes. Yeah, I'm sort of fighting the system right now. And the, okay. system, the system says there's 10 minutes left in our uh, meeting, which oh, I never really. Yeah. Which is kind of weird. Uh, was yeah, I thought it just went on as long as you wanted it to, but that's what I thought. I too. guess they need money, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. uh, we might have to restart this. I don't know, but uh, we can let it go for another day. It doesn't. That's true. Uh, Part one. Yeah. Well, um, let's let's get as much done as we can then for the time that we have left. Um, okay. So. How, yeah, they had. Let's go let back. Me to, finish, go ahead. Let me finish the thought. Go ahead. Uh, so they they had two things to say in the very first tape, and uh, that was that uh, this was a day of some importance, and it was also. Uh, uh, Oh, darn it. Let me see now. What was I going to say? Oh, and that, that, yeah, they were going to be giving us the blue keys. Uh, I remember that. And we're going like, what the heck are the blue keys? And uh, then the other day, I saw something there. Uh, I was reading about, in this article I was reading up came the word blue keys. Mm -hmm. And so they didn't say anything about it. So uh, Leslie and I were completely lost as to what, uh, what they meant by that and where we were going. Uh, but later on, I found out what the, or I realized what the blue keys were, was that they were, yeah, I'm seeing uh, pictures. I'd set these up for uh, Ray Palmer, but I'm trying to get to Wayne's uh, screen. Yeah, well, can you hear me while I'm talking? Yes, I can. Don't, don't let the pictures distract All you. Right. So anyway, what the blue keys are about is they are keys to life, little concepts that help us to understand what life is about. And for example, like they ask the question, uh, what is this material life or what is the purpose of this material life? See, real right. short, they right. don't lecture. They just say things like this. What's, what is the real purpose of the physical life? Right. And I thought about it and thought about it. And then they 
came back and explained that and said, the material life is a process. Note the word process. Material life is a process by which the heavens are populated. That's it interesting. Me, it took me 20 years to figure that out. Can you that, go ahead, please help the, us now. Okay. The, uh, uh, the number one thing that we need to do is to have a good life on earth, to have children, have families, and then pass over to the next level. You see, right. but we in right now, what's wrong with the world today, or one of the many things rather, mm -hmm. is that we are no longer concentrating on producing good people. That's an interesting perspective. You know, we have to take these babies and we got to raise them up. It's our responsibility to raise them up, to educate them, to teach them moral value so that when they pass to the next level, a lot of that work is already going to be done. I think that's, it sounds uh, right on as an analysis. Yeah. You know? uh, by the way, I'm showing uh, the channeled writings of Wayne in text form, uh, I'll put a description link in the description. I'll put a link for this, but other people certainly can read what was channeled by Wayne from the elders if they wish to. Yeah, I got someone wanting to. Uh... Okay, I was trying to call my wife on this, her girlfriends. So. Yes, and when, when, you, when you really stop and think about that and realize that that's what's wrong, uh, we're having these mass shootings and, they, and the Democrats keep wanting to blame it on the guns, you know, which, right. yeah, I'd be better off if we didn't have the guns around, but we do have them, so we got to live with it. And, but why don't I go out and kill someone? I don't go out and kill someone because I know it's not right to do. You, you were raised properly, at least See? you were raised well enough not to kill people. Yeah, so these these brats think that it's, they glorify killing a bunch of school children. And they do it because they weren't told you don't do those kind of things. When you understand this, I don't care what the gun is you have, you're not going to do it. I wouldn't do it. I could have the finest gun in the world. And I'm not going to go in a school and kill kids. Well, why don't I do it? Because I know it's not right. It's that simple. So one of the great keys to life is to raise children so that they will respect and love everyone, not simply live selfishly or become connected with dark forces that could bring them to violence and to drug addiction and so on. Well, if people understand this basic concept, they're not going to do drugs in the first place. Yes, yes, that makes sense. So, um, so anyway, uh, the the channel the channeling by Wayne had some very key points. One of them is that, and but it also brought some interesting points about a wasp itself. Do you, do you recall those messages? Oh, well, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> in the first, I don't know, it was the second or third taping of Wayne in a trance session when this voice came through and claimed to be John Newbro. Now, I say claimed to be because I have no way to know for certain that it was John Newbro. However, I have no doubt that it was. And then we received two or three more messages from Newbro later, uh, two of them at the uh, uh, Global Council meeting in Las Cruces, what, and what then another you, later. 
Can you and, brief, we only have about a minute left, but could you give a brief summary of what you think the core message was? Well, uh, Newbro was being held in detention uh, for creating this false religion uh, because we have to get away from religion, but Newbro could see himself as a, as a prophet. And that's not what he was supposed to do. He was simply supposed to take the uh, auto typing messages that he was getting 